Good morning. Good morning, everybody. So just before I do get going with um, uh, with this webinar, um, I'd like to share a disclaimer of all views are my own and don't represent eBay or Small Business Britain. The webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded onto eBay Academy and will be sent out to your emails in the next few days. Right, so I am going to get started. So welcome, welcome to this webinar on establishing your brand identity. So to get started, um, we've got a lot to get through in the next uh, 30 minutes. I'm going to get started with a little introduction about myself. So I'm Artie Palmer. I'm a certified brand strategist and a qualified personal performance coach. And what that actually really means is that I really love to educate and empower business owners to mindfully define their brand so that they can use it with intent, joy and impact. I was that business owner when I first started um, all over the place, you know, had a very scattergun approach, marketing uh, marketing approach. And I was kind of going around in circles, serving anybody and everybody. Um, and just like kind of lost my direction a little bit and, you know, felt a bit demotivated and frustrated. It was only when I really, really learned the importance of the power of a brand and brand strategy did I, you know, it was a game changer for me. And I also wanted it to be a game changer for the clients that I work with. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, because I want other businesses to, you know, have uh, create an impact and have success in their in their growth. So what I'm going to be covering today is the importance of a brand and five ways to establish your brand identity. And then I'm going to leave you with a little checklist uh, so then you can stay on track with things. Right. So firstly, the whole point of a business is that it sells products and services, right? You know, that's the whole point of why we set up a business. It sells products and services. But then we also need to start thinking about how do we actually get people to our, our business, our products and services? And that comes from forming an identity for your business. And that identity is called a brand. And a brand does a variety of different things from creating communications, you know, it has an ethos, it has people that represent it, it has imagery, it has a personality, and it delivers various kinds of experiences. And this identity is what actually pulls people and attracts them to your business, your products and services. Because if we didn't have a, a brand around our business and our products and services, everyone, can you imagine if everyone was just very, very product-led or service-led as a business, it will be very difficult to sort of understand, right, why do we want to work with them? Why should we work with them? So this identity called a brand is what represents our business. Having worked with like hundreds and hundreds of business owners, what business owners actually want is that, you know, we want to know how to appeal to our relevant target audience. We want to make sales. We want to make money. We want to create awareness through our marketing. We want to be the go-to person, product, or service. And we want to have, you know, create opportunities and, you know, have growth in our, uh, in our business and create that kind of impact and make that real kind of positive difference. I'm still, I'm still yet to come across a business owner that doesn't, through their product or service, their business wants to create some sort of po positive difference in somebody's life or business. So why do we even need a brand? Well, in this very, very digitally, well, dig digitally connected world that we now live in, I'm sure you can agree that we are in a much more noisier market. We are constantly bombarded with lots and lots and lots of marketing messages. People have a lot more choice nowadays to, to you know, from to who they who they work with, um, and yet they've got so much choice available to them. Sorry. Um, they have a lot more easier accessibility to, to businesses. You know, nowadays you can just go into a search function on one of the social platforms and there you have it. You've got a lot more accessibility to, to businesses. People have more knowledge to make informed decisions because they have access to all of this information, you know, that that's just very easily and readily available. And Consumers are a lot more aware and conscious about who they are buying from, why they are buying from them, you know, and this goes beyond their product and service. 
So the importance of actually having a brand, what it does for you, it clarifies what you stand for so that you can communicate it effectively. Not only clarifies what it stands for, for people that are you know, wanting to buy your products and services and stuff, but also it clarifies what it stands for, for you. It differentiates you in the marketplace so then that you can be the obvious choice. Again, you know, some of us are, you know, in very, very saturated markets. So you've got to understand and help people to understand what differentiates you and what distinguishes you from other people that are, you know, potentially op offering the same or similar products or services. It attracts your ideal audience and, you know, that results in sales, it results in uh, collaborations, partnerships, um, and all sorts of other things like that. It also connects deeply with, with your audience and creates that loyalty. You know, um, Apple is a fantastic example of that. You know, they, they, they have people queuing um, at the early, early hours in the morning when, when they're about to uh, launch their, their new product. The other thing it does, it prioritizes your focus and direction and your actions. Earlier, I mentioned, you know, I was that business owner that was going around in circles all over the place. I'll try this one day and then I'll try, you know, get, get on this other kind of trend. But no, actually, when you've got a brand and you really understand what, what it's about and, you know, it's directing your business, it then helps you to prioritize your focus, your direction and your actions. And very importantly, it positions your business as the go-to. So people can actually really start understanding and honing into when, when you start honing into this is what who I like to serve and this is, you know, the, the industry space, the market I want to be in, and you really start positioning yourself and get even really quite granular with that, you then really do start being known as that go-to um, and being the obvious choice for, for people. You're making it easier, you're making their buying decision easier. Which ultimately, you know, a brand ultimately, it builds trust and it builds rec recognition and reputation. So it's this whole variety of different things. And there's probably more as well, you know, that actually leads into building this trust, reputation and recognition for your brand and your business. So that's the importance of having a brand. So now I'm going to share with you five ways to establish your brand identity. So number one. And this one gets overlooked. Um, I overlooked it when I first started my business, you know, the, really the importance to discover and define your brand. And in, in, in terms of what you can do to, to do that, you need to identify what your brand stands for. You know, really understand why you're doing what you're doing that goes beyond selling your product and service. You know, what, what do you actually stand for in the market? And this is a great way to also help you to differentiate from what others are doing. Another very important thing is what you are working towards. You know, if you don't have a direction, there's a very famous quote by Stephen Covey, uh, begin with the end in mind. And, you know, if we, if we don't know where we're heading, we just it's just going to go round in circles and it's going to feel like, um, you know, all very confusing and stuff like that. But when you do actually have goals that you want to achieve and you, you've got an understanding of that and really got clear on your short short term medium and long term goals this will help again to prioritize and really create focus in what you're going to be doing for your business define your values you know your values are your printing your guiding principles they determine your actions and behaviors as a brand they help to deliver your promise so it's really important to, to really get clear about your brand values, because this is what's going to drive you in the way that you want to show up, how you're going to deliver, you know, what you're going to do with regards to your customer service and all of those kind of things. Getting clear on what you want to be known for. There's a very famous saying by Jeff Bezos, your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. I want you to have a think about actually if you wasn't in the room and one of your friends or networking buddies is talking about you, they've used your services, your products, and they're actually talking about, you know, your, your, your brand, your products, your business, what would, what would they actually be saying? What would you like them to be saying? Because when you get clear about what it is that you want to be known for, you can then become 
you can then start taking intentional actions to actually become that, to actually deliver that. And you can then start, you know, really carving and curating how your brand then comes across. Develop a distinctive personality. So just like humans have a personality, it's really, really important that your business and brand also has a personality. You know, at the end of the day, we're serving other people. We're serving human beings and human beings connect with human beings who have emotion and, um, you know, feelings and characteristics and traits. So, you know, what kind of um, distinctive personality can you attach to your business and brand? Once you have a lot of that in place and got clear around these brand fundamentals, you can then use that information to weave into how you then show up in your personal brand, your business brand and your product brand. And I want to let you know, these things do not stand alone. Your personal brand isn't just a standalone, nor is your business brand. They are all, they are all actually interconnected. They all, they work, they, they, they lend themselves to each other. So there may be a case of, you know, you've met somebody at a networking event and they've really liked you and then like, right, okay, let me go over and check out the, the, the business brand and go over to the website. And it's like, oh, I really like that person. Let me see what their product's about or their, you know, their service in that sense. Or they might have come across something on Instagram and it's, um, it's a product or, you know, and it's like, oh, I, I like that. Let me find out more about that. So, you know, you can see how this can then be interlinked into each other. And when you've got a really good understanding of those brand fundamentals that I just shared, it's a lot more easier to then bring that and weave that into your communications, your messaging. So the kind of dialogues that you're having when you're when you're networking or the kind of content and information that you're going to be putting on your socials and your website. And I feel like this is a really, really great example of all of those things coming together. So, you know, we've got Joe Wicks, who's uh, the, the body coach. And, you know, if we really drill down into what his mission, vision, purpose and what he stands for and his values and all of those kind of things, um, you know, he, for him, he wants to make the world fitter, healthier and happier. And you can see how that then is weaved into his content. If anyone follows him or, you know, do go and check out his uh, Instagram after and you will see that, you know, how this actually surfaces through his content communications, how it surfaces through his products and services that he actually puts out there. So, you know, because for him, he wants to make the world fitter, healthier and happier. And that is like a golden thread weaved into everything else that he does and delivers. So something for you to also consider when it comes to establishing your brand identity. Right, number two, know your target audience. Really, really, really important. Um, this, is, this is so key to developing and growing your business because you need to know, you know, who it is that you are actually serving. When I say need to know your clients, customers, audience, I'm talking not about just their age and, you know, some of their demographics, really get clear around what are their needs, their fears, their, their, their challenges, what's going on in their life that's stopping them from becoming who they could become. Um, you know, what, what, what are those uh, pain points that they're experiencing and also understanding the desires and outcomes and the results that they want what kind of transformations do they want in their life because when you get a lot more clearer around this and really understand your customer remembering at the end of the day your business is for your customers you want to serve them you want to make a difference in their life you know getting clear on these kind of things will help you to really fine-tune your communications and your sales messaging and stuff like that, because now you are actually emotionally engaging with your consumers, your customers, your audiences. Another good thing is to ask them, you know, no, not just guess, ask them, you know, you, you've probably got clients that you've worked with, you've got, you know, various kind of audiences that you've sort of thought, okay, yeah, yeah, th these people would be great for my service or great to buy my product. Ask them what what why what what was it that made them purchase? What is it that isn't making them purchase? Um, you know, and get clearer around these needs, fears, challenges, and the desires and outcomes and results that they actually want. And then you can start really tailoring your your messaging and communications around that. Also, thinking about who do you seek to influence? You know, through your brand, through your business, 
you may also have different kind of clusters of audiences that you seek to influence. So you might be serving a consumer that you may also want to work with um, networking communities or certain organizations to get your message out there. So really getting clear on actually who else would I like to seek to, to influence because you can, again, you know, create dialogue, you can create communications around that so you can, again, be seen as the person to, to go to. And that will then also help to refine your product and service so it does serve your customer in a more effective way. Right, let's now move into number three, which is create on brand visual identity and messaging. And I say on brand for a reason, because a lot of businesses, they start up and it's like this excitement and they're like, right, let me get my logo done. Let me get my website done. And then my, you know, get, get on social media and do some marketing. And then again, that's like, it's like, why am I blending in? And, you know, I just feel like everyone is kind of saying similar kind of things to me. And that's why it's really, really important, you know, to do the step one, what the, the what I mentioned in discovery and define your brand first, because then only can you really create on brand visual identity and messaging. So then, you know, working on your logo, your color palette, fonts, you know, the shapes, patterns, the visual style, and now all of this is actually going to be informed from the brand. You know, you've got maybe a brand personality that is, um, I don't know, uh, energetic and daring and that kind of thing. So now, you know, you can sort of bring that in to a visual identity and a, and a style. Um, and then that will also help to inform the kind of brand phrases you want to be known for and the kind of tone of voice that you're going to be using uh, to, again, you know, to, to connect with your audience and also to to really carve out your authenticity in 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 that way and that's what's going to help you also to craft a compelling narrative you know having a clear one a clear narrative that you can actually go out with and this is what's going to help you to stay on brand in that sense because you know you've now got an understanding of why you're doing what you're doing your mission vision values and all of those kind of things um, and then you can create a really kind of succinct uh, narrative whether it's you your team you know your briefing um, suppliers or strategic partners everybody's then on the same page um, and then creating you know the, the imagery and photography that also carries that essence across in 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 all of that so if you are thinking of doing like a personal branding shoot or even product photography you know for for your uh, eBay uh, site and stuff like that you know if, if there's certain kind of if you're thinking right I want it you know to look sleek and that then also always make it look sleek you know your photography and imagery and that kind of thing or if you're thinking you know I want it to be cutting edge or quirky then you know bring this in if that's part of your brand then bring it in you know make it consistent in that way and here's just a you know some some examples of uh, brands that I've worked with but in order to get to this kind of visuals, interiors, um, you know, graphics and all of that kind of thing, it all comes from the understanding of what their brand meant to them, what they're about, why they're doing what they're doing, their values, their personality, uh, the essence of it, their ethos. And that's how we were able to create on-brand visual messaging, vi on-brand visuals and uh, messaging. Right, number four, communicate intentionally. This now you've got this whole, you know, look at you've got the understanding of your brand, you've got the look and feel of it, you know, so now it's all really nicely piecing together to establish this brand identity. And now it's also very much about, you know, communicating it intentionally. So really do consider all the touch points you're on, you know, is there a seamless connection? So like I mentioned earlier, sometimes, you know, we might meet people at networking or we might come across their website first, or we might come across the eBay portal or, you know, a blog or an article and those kind of things. So, you know, is there a seamless connection with what you're saying? Is there some sort of consistency and congruency? Um, and, you know, which nicely leads me into consistency, consistency in your imagery, in your products, in your messaging, you know, in, in your headshots. These are the kind of things you could be looking out for in, in the video. So, you know, really actually even taking advantage, I, I believe in them, the eBay portal, you know, you can actually have your uh, profile cover and same for social media and all of those kind of things. You can take take advantage of the videos that you can put up and those kind of things. But ensuring that there is that 
consistency there. Um, and the other thing is when you're communicating intentionally, now that you know who you want to, you know, uh, appeal to, attract, you want, you know what you want to be known for, then it's also about knowing is one thing, but then it's about the doing, you know. So now you've got to inform and let other people know by evidencing and showcasing your your expertise and you know why your why your product, um, why it's worked so well for others, and really getting that evidence and showcasing that um, that that across. And the next thing is you know building meaningful relationships and connections. Um, so. When I say that, you know, when, when we're out and about, whether it's, I, I love, I, I keep saying networking because it's, it's one of the things I absolutely love and it's really helped me to grow my business. And, you know, by leveraging uh, relationships, helping getting those connections, whether it's online, offline, building meaningful relationships, um, that comes from having really conscious conversations about your business, about your brand. And I'm not talking about, you know, going in there and sell, sell, sell. It's not that at all. It's also about building rapport, building those kind of solid relationships, getting connected, um, understanding others and helping them to understand what your brand is about. Because I always say you just never know who knows who and, you know, what kind of opportunities can come out of that. And opportunities come about because when you're saying the right things intentionally about your business, your brand, you know, what your aspirations are, um, who you'd love to work with and you've got you're clear around these kind of things then it's easier to share that with others and you know you're planting seeds that can help to grow your your business and brand in that sense and you're just remembering you know these are just a few of the touch points but just remembering you know people are landing in various places so don't think they're just landing in one place and then it's you know there's, there's always going to be different places they might meet you first like I say in your social media or it might be through word of mouth it might be through your email marketing or PR um, so making sure that consistency is there and there is that seamless connection uh, for, for people and number five is belief you know, running a business, building a brand is not one of the easiest things to do, nor is it a bed of bed of roses. But what I can definitely say to you, you know, if a brand isn't clear on the inside, it will not be clear on the outside. And there is so much, so much importance to understanding this, because this is what's going to drive your belief in your own business, in your own brand, in your own self. And, you know, people, people like People buy from, you know, when they feel confident about your, your product, your services around you, your service um, um, and what, 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 you, what you're about. So having that belief activated for you because you've got a real clarity of why you're doing what you're doing, why your you know, product and service is absolutely brilliant, um, you know, who you serve the transformations that you're able to provide, um, why it excites you and enthuses you is all part and parcel of building this confidence within you um, and, you know, for it to really get out there. So having the belief is really important because that's what's going to help to fuel your confidence. And it's what's going to help you keep dedicated to building this, this business, this brand that, you know, you have a vision for. We talked about, you know, what are you working towards? What's that vision that you're working towards? Because in business, there are going to be curveballs. In life, there are going to be challenges and stuff like that. But what's going to keep you going? What's going to keep you, you know, have that confidence and that dedication is going to be these beliefs. And that's what's going to show up in your energy. And when I always like to say, you know, a brand is also an energy. It is felt, you know, you'll feel like when you sometimes, and, and, and go and experiment with this, go and land on people's websites, Instagram, LinkedIn, and you feel the energy and they're not even there. That's a written post. It's an image or, you know, that, that kind of thing. And that's pure passion and purpose that is actually really coming through. And that comes from when you actually believe in what it is that you're doing. So really, really important to establishing your brand identity, you know, not just for the short term, for long term as well. So just going to wrap it up now into this little checklist, um, because I see a lot of business owners that will try and get straight to promote and grow. Step three, you know, promote, promote and grow. I want to promote and grow my business. So that, that's what I want to do. But actually, they don't have, you know, they haven't even got step one in place. Or they've got a little bit of step one in place. But what I really want you to have a look at and think about from here on is, you know, clarify your brand, discover and define what it's all about first. 
And then you go into the create side, design and develop, design and develop the, you know, your, your visual identity, your messaging, your products and services, all of those kind of things. And then go into the communicate. And that's where you can then promote and grow and get sales, you know, more opportunities, possibilities. And, you know, at any point, do you feel like, oh, you know, something's not working? I, what do I need to tweak? Always come back to this little uh, checklist, this little framework of do I need to clarify something? Do I need to create something? Or, you know, is it that I need to communicate something? So this is just a little uh, checklist, a framework for you. So to, it will help you to stay on track and on brand. Right. So I'm just going to summarize all of this of, you know, why do you need a powerful brand? It helps you stand out. It differentiates you from your competitors. It gets your message across effectively. It helps people to identify your expertise um, and it creates that meaningful connection. How do you know you have a powerful brand? People start recognizing your style. You know, I've had people say to me, oh, I know when your when your post is coming in my feed, I, I recognize the, you know, the style. Um, people respond, you know, they start responding to your marketing, they're engaging. Uh, you are experiencing outcomes, results, and, uh, you know, new, new opportunities. So people might be saying, you know, can you, can you come on my podcast? I'd like to, or can you come and deliver a talk? Or, you know, I'd like to work with you. I'd like to purchase. Well, you are seeing the, the sales and you are attracting aligned opportunities that are aligned to your mission and vision and your purpose. What does a powerful brand consist of? Clear messaging, consistency. When I say consistency, it's not about, you know, consistency of, posting three times a month, uh, a week on, on social media. I'm talking consistency across all of your platforms, that seamless connection uh, that, that, you know, there's a congruent brand here. Uh, clear positioning, emotionally engaging, um, and again, coming back to that unique style. I would love for you now to share, if you would like, in, in the chat, uh, what one action are you going to take to work on establishing your brand identity or, you know, just, just write it down in, an, in a notepad. I'd like for you to go away with something actionable that you can actually do. And uh, yeah, feel free to, like I say, sh uh, share it in the chat. And if you would like to have more mindful brand, uh, brand building tips, uh, do feel free to connect with me. These are the social platforms I'm on. I'm on LinkedIn as RT Palmer, Instagram as RT.Palmer. And I do have a weekly bite-sized brand tips and action uh, newsletter that goes out uh, on Tuesdays. And you can sign up to that through my Instagram bio. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's gosh, that's gone really quick. And thank you.